speed ahead time a little bit to get closer to Apoapsis. That's probably good enough for these engines. Firing. See Apoapsis counting down and the Periapsis coming up. started the engines a little sooner because we are going to go past apoapsis and the external tank will go around on the original path and burn up in the atmosphere and the original path had a periapsis of about 10 kilometers, I believe, which actually is a little high. Should probably have been negative. But the external tank will still go around and crash into the atmosphere. Still circularizing the orbit. That's periapsis coming up. It's 110 kilometers. Still quite a ways to go. So I'm going to accelerate time a little bit. 50, 160, 170. Getting pretty close. You can see the orbit eccentricity coming down. That's how circular the orbit is. Zero is a perfect circle. And that's as good as we're going to get. Once you reach a certain point, the engines actually start increasing the apoapsis instead of the periapsis. So then you have to pretty much kill <clears throat> kill thrust because you're not doing yourself any favors by continuing to uh, run the engines at that point. But I have a good orbit despite a horrible launch. I have a good circular orbit and I'm a little ways behind the International Space Station. Seems like I'm a little a little off. Should be closer than that. But I could still rendezvous with it. The next maneuver, and I'm simply not going to have time to go through the whole thing, but the next maneuver is to fix this relative inclination. And I'll do that at the ascending node, because that's coming up next. There are two node passages. There's the ascending node and the descending node. You can make the correction at either node. You just simply choose whichever one you run into first. At least that's how I do it. I don't know if NASA has a more formal protocol. So I'm coming up to the ascending node in 880 seconds. So I'll warp time ahead. And basically when this number is half of this number, ascending node is anti-normal, that's when you uh, fire your engines. So I'm going to fire the engines at approximately 275. But I do have to have the orbiter in proper orientation first. And I just realized I didn't have the orbit hub HUD up. So I'm now in proper orientation. So as soon as the align plane MFD tells me to fire the engines, I'll do that. Should be any second now. There it is. And you'll see the relative inclination count down. And what that does if you look here, you can see my orbital path is the green line. The yellow line is the International Space Station's orbital path. By bringing the relative inclination down to zero, it will lay this green line straight over top of the yellow line, which means that I have the same path around the Earth as
as the International Space Station. Right now I'm off by enough that I would never be able to rendezvous. In one degree, <clears throat> or even a, a small percentage of one degree is too much. You have to be exactly zero, zero, zero in order to rendezvous with the, spa uh, the space station, or any object for that matter. So you can see these plane changes are very expensive in terms of how long you have to burn the engines. I've been burning for quite a while already and it's only come down a quarter of one degree. So every fraction of a degree that you're off costs a lot of, you know, money in terms of how much fuel you're burning and how much mass is required to uh, to make that correction. So when you when you launch, you want your launch profile to be such that your relative inclination is as close to zero as possible on the ride to orbit. That way you don't have to make any corrections after you get into orbit. So my launch effort could have could have been a lot better. Let's go ahead and warp time ahead here a little bit. See the relative inclination coming down. It may not get all the way to zero on one node passage. Sometimes you have to go to the other node and finish it off. But you can see it's getting tighter. And I mean, I'm warped ahead at a factor of 10 and I'm still burning, so you can see how incredibly costly this burn is. So their aligned plane tells me that it thinks that's all it's going to get out of this particular passage. But as long as this is still coming down, I feel like it's still worthwhile to burn. When I see this no longer counting down, that's when I stop the burn. But I didn't get the entire inclination down to zero on one pass, so I'm going to have to orbit all the way around to the other side of the planet and try again. burned half of my propellant just making this inclination change. So you can see that this is just an incredibly costly thing to do. probably just not perfectly efficient. That's probably why the aligned plane MFD tells you to kill thrust, because I'm probably just not getting perfect efficiency out of this burn. And we're almost... That is as good as it's going to get on this passage. Once you see this start tilting around, I know that once it passes the halfway point, then it actually starts increasing the relative inclination after this gets past the halfway point, and I don't know why that is, but it is that way. So now I'm going to go around to the descending node and finish off this uh, relative inclination change. And when I get to the descending node, I'm actually going to have to rotate the orbiter in the other direction. Currently, I'm perpendicular um, 90 degrees down. And when I get to the other side, I'll have to rotate 90 degrees up. And I guess that's actually a bad way to put it, because there is no up and down. I believe that I believe down just means 
based on the direction of flight around the around the body around in this case the body is the earth so I believe 90 degrees down would be you know south maybe it's a really bad way to put it because there is no north south up down in space so anyway let's go around to the descending node and when this gets all the way down to about three that's when it'll be time to fire but I'll have to come out of warp sooner than that so I can make the orientation change And that's pretty close. So descending node, go normal plus. Okay. And when this reaches about 3.5, give or take, that's when the align plane MFD is going to tell me to fire the engines. And this will be a fairly short burn. use the translation just to get rid of that last little bit of T-T-H-A-T-T-H-D and there we go relative inclination zero and the estimated amount of thrust to have a zero inclination is almost zero so that's about as perfect as it's going to get. And we'll go to the prograde position just for normal orbit. Now if I zoom out, oops, that's in. If I zoom out of the map, you can see that I now have perfect alignment with the International Space Station. My orbit around the Earth is exactly in line with the ISS and this will never change. As long as I'm in orbit, I'll continually stay on this path no matter how many times I go around. I suppose in real life there are various permutations, I believe that's the correct term, that can actually adjust, can actually make your path change slightly. Uh, solar wind or something, different things that can that can change your can have subtle changes on your orbit but I don't have the advanced permutations enabled on orbiters so I don't have to worry about stuff like that now if I wanted to dock I would have to rendezvous with the ISS and that just Unfortunately, it takes too long for me to be able to finish with this video, so I'm going to have to pretty much end it here. It would take me another, probably close to another half hour at least, if not an hour, to rendezvous with the ISS, and I don't have enough recording time to do that.